Well, normally we save the ratings talk for later, but given that we have CM Punk's return and Randy Orton and the whole collision and rampage going head-to-head with war games, let's talk about these numbers. Well, uh, I guess I'll start with the Raw. Um, did 1,884,000 viewers and an 0.65. So it was the most viewers, as expected, since the show after SummerSlam, and it was the best 1849 since the show after WrestleMania. It was the uh, the first uh, quarter did almost 2 million viewers, just under, which would have been the highest, qu- um, or first hour, I should say. The qu- Actually, the first two quarters beat 2 million. But the, um, the first hour was the highest hour, um, I believe, um, in uh, since August. Um, and, of course, going against football, it's even more impressive. I think if this happened, if they had brought back um, Punk um, not during football season, you know, like uh, after the Royal Rumble, let's say, I mean, which I would not suggest doing because obviously Chicago was the place to do it. But if they had, I think that the number um, – in 18 to 49s, I think it would beat the day after Mania or the the, the show the day after Mania, um, you know, because obviously football still hurt it a lot. I didn't see, I haven't seen the football number. I know it was way down from the week before, but um, you know, it's still going to hurt. You know, I mean, and and significantly, the thing that I've really noticed with uh, with WWE and and with AEW too, but more with WWE is that when something really big happens, the audience that really like will vary the most is men 18 to 34. It's like if things are boring, you know, and and, and with both companies, I think that that audience, like the older audience is pretty, you know, it's pretty solid. You know, it's like from 35 on, those people are watching, you know, know, something like Punk coming back, of course it's going to be bigger. But, you know, it's it'll be bigger by somewhat, right? But the 18 to 34 audience and the teenage audience, what I've noticed with, is that um, they, you know, most of them um, are, you know, there's there, you know, a lot of them. I shouldn't say most, but you know, probably most, but but a lot. Um, they're watching when something big happens and they're not watching every week. And so this is one of those things where, like, you know, something big happens and they know it's big. You know, that's going to really um, swell that audience. I think, um, let me just see what 1834 was up. Um, it was up 47% from the week before. So, perfect example. Men, men 18 to, to 34. Um, um, so, you know, that, it, it's it's like, uh, you know, that's the audience that, um, you know, is going to, like I said, that's going to make, you know, and, and punk was going to appeal really big to them. And Orton, too. I mean, like, if you look at the quarter hours, you know, you would come to the conclusion that Orton meant more than Punk because the Orton number at the beginning was, you know, what, 300,000 more than the Punk number at the end, um, roughly. But that's not true because it's, it's um, you know, the audience pattern of these shows remained the same. It's like the punk quarter was actually the third lowest quarter, but it's the last quarter, and it's going to be the lowest quarter, especially now, um, you know, when daylight savings time is over. You know, it's that pattern where people tune in early, and as it gets later, um, especially in hour three, they're going to tune out. And that's what happened here, even with saving punk to the end. Obviously, if punk wasn't in hour three, the drop would have been more. Um, Punk himself, you know, that last quarter, it was... um, you know, way up in 18 to 49 viewers. It was actually down in over 50 viewers from the quarter before because those viewers, you know, it, he didn't move there. He didn't move them. But younger viewers, he moved greatly. So, um, you know, I mean, over from the... And, and, and the, the thing he followed was the Orton Mysterio match. So the actual lowest point of the show was Orton's first match, you know, with Dominic Mysterio, who's, you know, pretty over heel. But it's, you know, it's got to do completely with the time of the show it was on. And so a lot of times, like, and I've seen this with, like, with both WWE Raw, but way more with AEW where, and it's going to be very interesting, actually, uh, for the ratings on um, the show, the, um, you know, for, for tonight's show, is if the Swerve-Jay White match um, bucks the pattern 
where's the normal pattern of you know the last segment on dynamite being you know down in the decline as the show goes on it's which is just the pattern and you it, and on rare occasion with dynamite there the patterns bucked but most of the time it is the pattern and the same with raw and punk bucked it only to a degree you know um but uh yeah the first half hour of of raw was was gigantic overall the show rating was was great you can't say anything negative about it for a uh you know for a show during football season it's gonna be the the highest as we knew it would it's gonna be the highest during football season it's probably been you know i'd have to check for last year to see if any of the shows last year during football season beat it i didn't actually look that up but even comparison it's like uh i think in 18 to 49 i'm sure no fo no show in football season last year came close because um well last year you know raw was doing more viewers it was far more over 50 viewers. You know, the over 50 viewers have, is, have dropped greatly, but the 18 to 49 viewers and 1834 viewers, you know, are are way up from from last year. So, um, you know, and this continued that pattern uh, to the extreme, actually. So that was Raw. The uh, AEW shows, obviously, on uh, Saturday night did not do well. I don't think anyone expected they would. Rampage was out of the time slot on a new day. No, you know, most of the regular viewers probably didn't even know. Um, Collision was in its regular time slot. It was head to head with uh, Survivor Series, so it got hurt. It was uh, 317,000 viewers and 0.09. You know, not good. I mean, it's the lowest viewers in the time slot for a Collision show um, in its history, in its regular time slot. So, um, and, and not surprising. And I mean, just, just really weak. I mean, you're talking 17,000 in men, 18 to 34, 13,000 in women, 18 to 34 for collision, you know, just, and you know, again, it wasn't a great collision show anyway. Um, and then rampage with seven o'clock was 200 and, uh, I think it's 264,000 viewers in 0 0.08. So, um, you know whatever the uh you know that was kind of uh the deal there the um there was, uh, there was a couple of spots on the uh, show that actually had some growth the um the uh what was it the uh was it brody man um brody uh uh buddy matthews and malachi black against commander and gravity that horrible match actually did you know pretty solid growth believe it or not uh great yeah, yeah. Um, the main event with uh, Eddie Kingston and Brody King actually was was pretty down. They had a big drop, um, which I presume is because I think that they were getting ready to start the men's war games match at that time, and it just probably knocked them for a loop. Um, SmackDown on Friday on FS1 did 789,000 viewers in 0.24, which was way, way down from any... Uh, SmackDown show ever on FS1. In fact, it's the lowest number for SmackDown in the entire history of the show going back to, you know, its beginnings, whatever it was. Uh, it was like 19, started in 1999, so it's like 24 years. So, yeah, whenever it started. Um, yeah, lowest rating ever. Um, I mean, there was a lot of football on head-to-head. -head. Um, there's a lot of sports on head-to-head. -head. They had a lot of competition. Um but, you know, the last time they were on, they had uh, the World Series, and they did way better. Uh, of course, the last time they were on against the World Series, they had seen it, and they had uh, Roman. Uh, Roman Reigns both on the show, and this show did not have them. And, um, you know, as far as, like, compared to, they, let's see, they had, uh, um, actually, it's the second lowest in history. There was a New Year's Eve show on FS1. Or New Year's, yeah, New Year's Eve show on FS1 where they did a best of show. So that actually did way worse. But for a actual SmackDown show, yeah, this is the lowest, um, I, the lowest viewers in history, and I believe the lowest 18 to 49 in history as well. Um, you know, Fox is foot, Fox aired Oregon, Oregon State, and it did, uh, you know, four million one hundred twenty-one thousand viewers in 0.98. So it beat what SmackDown would have done by a wide, wide margin. So you can't go, ah, oh, they should have but been on their regular thing. And then they had uh, Texas, Texas Tech, Michigan State, Penn State. Um, there was ESPN had the NBA. Um, TNT had the NHL, which which SmackDown did beat the NHL games, but there was a lot of competition. Um, 
you know, between network um, network and uh, and cable. SmackDown was fourth for the night and second only to ESPN in the time slot. So, you know, as far as Friday night goes and competition and everything like that, it wasn't that bad. But um, compared to the last time they were down, uh, the last time on FS1, last month they were down 31% in viewers, 31% in 1849 and 19% in 18 to 34, and that was the basic difference. They were way down in men 35 to 49, which obviously probably has to do with all of the football and basketball competition. And, um, you know, as far as the show went, the uh, stuff with the women, um, for the most part, did well. The actual peak of the show, which is unusual you know, for um, a cable show was the main event, the Flair and Becky Lynch against Bailey and Oscar match. So they did grow for the main event. But, um, yeah, overall number, you know, I mean, it was a bad number. And uh, there's, you know, I think Thanksgiving weekend. The one thing is, is what I've seen this year and has and been the case the last several years is Thanksgiving week for wrestling is bad thanksgiving week for football and basketball is great so whatever that means i think some of it is has to do with uh people being with the family you know more well people yeah listen together. i don't if, if you're a wrestling fan and you're going somewhere over thanksgiving you're going you to a TV. relative's house or whatever they're probably going to watch football are and not going to say hey let's watch that dynamite show they're going to say let's watch football Let's They're going to say, let's watch football. Exactly. Yep. So I think yep. that's yep. that's why football does better and wrestling does worse. Fo- football did incredible numbers yes. this last week. There was uh, one game did like 41 million viewers. I mean, the Thursday it's and probably Friday. probably giant numbers per house. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, yes. I didn't look that up, but um, I did look it up. Um, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, but it was like, yeah, the, the numbers per household – for Thanksgiving week games for football, I think two years ago was the last time I actually checked that out. Way up there, like like numbers, like like not quite double usual, but but like probably you know one point seven times what a usual football game would do. Incredible difference. And in fact, you know the perfect example of this is I saw um, the out of home viewership of the football games, and I think this was Thanksgiving Day. But it might have been for uh, things Thursday and Friday, but um, I think it was the Thanksgiving night game, the Thanksgiving Day games. It was like um, unheard of numbers of people who because they went to somebody's house, but they're Nielsen families or Nielsen people. They went to somebody's house, and normally, you know, it, it, you you know, years ago, this was one of the flaws with Nielsen, was that you know they would count, um, you know, your viewership. Um, from your in your own home, but if you left your home, they wouldn't count the viewership. So now they have out of home viewership, and um, you know, and some people have argued. I, I've seen some football people when they see these numbers and go like, "Oh, you know, like uh, if you um, if you take out the out of home viewership, they're not really up that much from a couple of years ago," and that's true. You know, it's true. But at the same time, these are real numbers. You know, they always should have been measured this way. And also, you know, there's, again, a lot of these stations are in so so many less homes, so the idea that they're actually up, um, you know, like, whatever it is, because football, because football is like the aberration of everything when it comes to television, in the sense that everything on television drops every single year, although, you know, obviously WWE did not drop this year. Um, oh, Raw did. Raw, I mean, Raw's, Raw's down. SmackDown's up. NXT's way up. But... Um, most things in television, you know, generally speaking, you're, you're down about 11%. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.